So before I dive in, I invite you to experience a mindful moment with me. It's nothing too fancy, just a few deep breaths. So if you will, please indulge me by closing your eyes and inhaling deeply. Hold it for just a moment and then slowly exhale. Now open your eyes. How did that feel? Good? Well, let's do it again, all right? So close your eyes and breathe in deeply. Hold it and then slowly exhale. Ooh. So you might be asking, Melissa, what's with the clapping? And I'm here to tell you that that clapping represents what I call a disruptor. Disruptors have a sole mission of interrupting your peaceful moments. They come in many shapes, many sizes, and most often they're unexpected. But one thing for sure, they're coming. And you have to know how to handle them when they do. There is a quote that says, change comes either through revelation or through devastation. So what I want to talk to you today um, is about peace. And peace not as what you may be used to hearing, like calmness and tranquility and sereneness. But I want to talk to you about peace as a process to help you when those disruptors come and they throw you off track. And then how to find your way and pivot to what's next. So I call it peace by design. And I'm going to share three steps with you today that you can utilize to help you when those disruptors come and they rock your world. So in 2015, I experienced a series of disruptors, not one, a series of disruptors. I went through divorce, cancer, unemployment, consecutively, simultaneously, and all at the same time, all of that. It was quite a time to be alive, if you can imagine. So I was stressed, I was overwhelmed, and I really didn't know what to do. So I knew um, that I needed a change. Um, I had just been promoted to uh, one of the highest paying uh, positions in my career at that point. Um, but shortly after being diagnosed with cancer, I found myself losing that job. It was null and void. You know, it was just like starting from square one. So what do you do? So after I gathered myself, I had to identify what needed to change. What did I need to do to get me stuck from point A to point B? And mind you, being fresh out of cancer treatment, I was not in a good space to do this. My body hurt. My skin was burned from the radiation treatment. And I honestly wanted to go into a room, lock the door, close it, and just not be bothered but that was not my choice. So I had to identify what I wanted. So I did that. I know that I needed to get out, I needed to make connections, and I needed to find employment. So Melissa gathered herself, and, and she was determined to do that. So that is the first step, is to identify what's needed. Then secondly, I had to create goals. How many of you have ever set some goals in your life? And by a show of hands still, have you ever heard of SMART goals? Yeah, that SMART goal methodology has been around since about 1981, and I would have been about six then. Yeah, it worked for a while, but as an adult, I had to set peace goals. I got really smart, and I set those peace goals. And what peace goals are, uh, peace goals are purposeful, they're examined, they're achievable, they're centered, and they're evolving. And when I say that, purposeful meaning that you have assigned a mission to that goal. You know exactly what you need to do, and you know the time frame that you need it to happen. Examine because you've looked at it, you've researched it, you've analyzed, you know that, okay, okay, this is okay, I can do this. Achievable, you have that firm belief, that firm foundation that you can make it happen. Centered, because your goals need to be centered on everything that you believe in. Your whole faith, your whole belief system has to be the driving force behind your goals. And then evolving, because 
really your goals need to have goals. You know, they need to allow you to achieve more than one thing at a time. So you've identified what needs to happen. You set those goals. And before I share the third step with you, I do want to say that it is important for you to trust yourself when you go through any type of crisis in order to get to your next blessing. So I am a sole believer that you cannot find peace in a place that you do not trust. So trust you. Trust that you have it within you to do it. Trust that you can move forward to what's next. And then the third step that I'll share is that you have to lock in with your full heart, like your skills, your inspiration, like everything that powers you to make this pivot and to get to your next step. You, you got to pull from everything that you know. So long before the crises of 2015 happened to me, um, I became a poet out of the blue. I, I'm, I was just poetic. I was so creative. I was writing poems for people. They were paying me for them. It was, it was great. It was such a time. But I had to pull from that whenever I went through this situation in, in 2015. And those, that was one of the things that helped me to move forward. So before I close, I would like to share one of those poems with you this morning. So if you would indulge me just one last time and close your eyes. And if you feel so inspired, you can raise your hand. It is totally up to you. But it is an inspirational poem and I simply call it a prayer of honesty. And it simply says, my dearest heavenly father, I hope I am not a bother, but from you I need to hear just to know that you are near. I need to feel your love and strengthened from above. My issues have me weary, Lord, and I need to see more clearly your word to me revealed. In your presence, I am healed. I am in my sacred place, lying prostrate on my face. I am putting aside the weight that you promised me you would take. I am casting my cares on you because your instruction tells me to lean not to my own understanding. Although my life can be demanding, I will have faith to trust and believe that your promises will be achieved. Thank you.